The Rock finally breaks silence on ditching WrestleMania 41. Jay Uso finally helps Roman Reigns and Jimmy Uso. Paul Heyman aligns with The Rock. Daniel Bryan is done with wrestling after AEW title loss. The Undertaker on how WWE backstage environment has changed because of Triple H. Jade Cargill begs fans to move on from her AEW past. Cody Rhodes' sister attacks Kevin Owens. Roman Reigns makes a surprise appearance to grant wishes. How Roman Reigns can simply destroy the new bloodline. Let's dive right in. Jay Uso finally helps Roman Reigns and Jimmy Uso. Paul Heyman aligns with The Rock. The Rock's appearance after Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns' match against the Bloodline at Bad Blood came as a huge surprise to fans. Despite being short and sweet, his eyebrow raise and the fingers across the throat gesture has pretty much relayed what he wants. Now that he has once again made his presence felt in the Stamford-based promotion, this will certainly have numerous implications for the Bloodline storyline moving forward. Further, many plausible angles could branch out from this and would likely continue in upcoming premium live events. One of them is this year's Survivor Series, War games which will be held in Vancouver, Canada. It is presumed that one of the matches would feature members of Solo Sikoa's bloodline against Roman Reigns' team. To that end, here are just some of the unexpected things that are likely to happen in the upcoming installment of the November PLE. Number 1. Kevin Owens to join the bloodline for the War Games match at Survivor Series. Just as when everyone thought it was over after Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns emerged as the victors during Bad Blood's main event, everyone got the shock of their lives after Kevin Owens delivered a brutal beatdown on Rhodes at the State Farm Arena parking lot. Owens was very much disappointed with his friend Cody Rhodes teaming with his arch nemesis Roman Reigns at Bad Blood. Further, the interaction between the former and current undisputed WWE champion after their Bad Blood main event match ended may also have fueled Owens' frustration even more, which led to the above-mentioned parking lot beatdown. With that in mind, it is likely that the prize fighter might opt to join the faction that he despises the most for him just to get even with his now former friend. Number 2. Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton joining Roman Reigns and Jimmy Uso's team. The Rock's return could also see not just the alliance of Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns, but also with Randy Orton at this year's Survivor Series, War Games. It is believed that Solo Sokoa's bloodline will be crossing paths yet again with Rhodes and Reigns during Survivor Series War Games match. If such a matchup comes to fruition, Rhodes, Reigns, and the returning Jimmy Uso are pretty much locked in for this. Since they need a couple more, Randy Orton might want to set aside his hatred toward Reigns and the OG bloodline to take on a common foe, Solo Sikoa, and his bloodline. Prior to Bad Blood, Rhodes had already explained his side to Orton, to which the Viper said that he was okay with it, as long as the undisputed champion did not make it a problem. Number 3. Jay Uso extends his help to his OG Bloodline crew. The reigning WWE Intercontinental Champion Jay Uso could also lend a helping hand and reunite with Roman Reigns and brother Jimmy at Survivor Series, War Games this November. Back in June last year, Jay quit the Bloodline and left SmackDown to join Raw. He betrayed Reigns and in turn, was betrayed by Jimmy Uso. With Jimmy trying to convince Reigns to get Jay back, it may not be long before the Intercontinental Champion has to return. Provided that such a scenario goes down at Survivor Series, The Rock will have to find other avenues in punishing Reigns if that is what he is planning to do. Number 4. Paul Heyman returns as The Rock's Wiseman The Bloodline's former counsel, Paul Heyman, has been out of WWE TV for quite some time now, after being being unceremoniously booted out from the villainous faction. However, the Wiseman could be back soon, after reports suggest that he was present backstage during the Bad Blood PLE. Many would argue that if Heyman was there during the PLE, then why did he not accompany Roman Reigns on his way to the ring? There are numerous reasons for such a decision, and one of the plausible ones includes Heyman no longer associating himself with Roman Reigns and being revealed as the Rock's counsel. Heyman could align himself with the more powerful Rock and take his side in taking out Roman Reigns, who was not there when his Wiseman was being taken taken out. The Hall of Famer could hold the grudge and use it to advise the final boss in his quest to take down Roman Reigns. Number 5. Jacob Fatu's betrayal could happen at this year's Survivor Series, War Games. The Bloodline 2.0's enforcer, Jacob Fatu, has been deemed the toughest member of the stable. Some pundits noticed that something was off with him and speculated that he could be turning on Solo Sokoa and the rest of the Bloodline. A case in point was the time when Fatu relinquished his WWE Tag Team Championship to Tonga Loa per Sokoa's orders. After surrendering his title, he was then appointed as the Bloodline's enforcer and professed his loyalty to his tribal chief. 
Despite his announcement of allegiance, it was noticeable at the time that he, Fatu, was irked with Sokoa's decision. In line with this, there were instances caught on camera where Fatu gives that glance to his tribal chief as if he wants to pummel him at that very moment. Number six, The Rock is the one calling the shots for the Bloodline 2.0. Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes fought tooth and nail to emerge the winner of their tag team match against Solo Sikoa and Jacob Fatu at Bad Blood. Meanwhile, as Sikoa and Fatu retreated into the thick of the crowd, someone from the audience took a video of it and captured something interesting. While on their way out, Sikoa was heard saying that it was part of the plan. It was not mentioned what it was, but it could be The Rock's return to the promotion. Sokoa's comment may have strengthened the speculation that The Rock could be behind the Sokoa-led bloodline as this could be revealed during the upcoming Survivor Series PLE. Further, there is also this possibility that The Rock could be the bloodline's fifth member if the faction is pitted against the American Nightmare and the OTC's team for the War Games match. Rumors are circulating that The Rock won't be part of WrestleMania 41. To that end, The Rock brawling in the aforementioned match could be the next best thing. Daniel Bryan is done with wrestling after AEW title loss. Bryan Danielson, the current AEW world champion, has been candid about his health issues as he prepares for the next chapter in his wrestling career. With his full-time wrestling career winding down, Danielson has now revealed that he will need neck surgery in the near future. Danielson, who won the AEW world title at AEW All In after putting his career on the line, has stated that he plans to retire from full-time competition when he eventually loses the championship. Speaking with Sean Garrett of Kiro 7 Seattle, Danielson and shared the seriousness of his situation. The idea is, whenever I lose this title, whether it's sometime down the road or against John Moxley, that would be it for me as a full-time wrestler. The wrestling legend added, the reality is right now I need neck surgery. That's coming sooner rather than later. There's going to become a point where this is untenable for me. Despite his love for wrestling, Danielson acknowledged the toll the sport has taken on his body, explaining that once he undergoes the necessary neck surgery, his future in the ring remains uncertain. Will I ever wrestle again once I lose the title? I don't know. My heart says yes because I love wrestling, but I've put my body through a lot to get to the success I have. At some point, you have to know when to hold them and know when to fold them, Danielson said. This isn't the first time Danielson has faced serious health concerns. He recently shared that he lost feeling in his legs during a match against Kazuchika Okada at AEW Dynamite's fifth anniversary show, further highlighting the risks he's taken in his storied career. As fans await Danielson's next move, the question remains, when will he lose the AEW world title, and will that moment mark the end of his in-ring legacy? How do you feel about Brian Danielson's decision to retire after losing the AEW world title? Do you think he should continue wrestling after his neck surgery? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. How do you feel about Brian Danielson's decision to retire after losing the AEW world title? The Undertaker on how WWE backstage environment has changed because of Triple H, WWE Hall of Famer. The Undertaker recently appeared on Booker T's podcast, where he discussed the significant changes in WWE's backstage environment under the leadership of Triple H. The legendary dead man, who has seen many transitions throughout his storied career, expressed his surprise at how calm things have become behind the scenes since Triple H, also known as Paul Levesque, took the reins. It's crazy to me how calm everything is backstage now. You know, Paul's demeanor is so chill. Every time I see him, he's got time to sit down and explain something to you. It's just not that helter-skelter fire drill, which I thrived in. The Undertaker revealed, noting the stark difference from the chaotic atmosphere he once thrived in. In the past, Monday nights at WWE Raw often involved last-minute changes, sometimes just minutes before going live, which tested the mettle of the performers. The Undertaker reflected on those moments, recalling how promos could change right before showtime, requiring superstars to think on their feet. I just remember working on a promo all day long, and then 10 minutes before you go out, it's completely changed. You had to come up with something, and you gotta go do it. You gotta do it live. However, the backstage environment under Triple H's regime is noticeably different. The Undertaker acknowledged that this calmer, more organized approach is likely beneficial for the younger talent, allowing them to develop at a faster pace without the pressure of constant last-minute changes. I know it's gotta be better for the athletes and performers. That helter-skelter fire drill thing that happened every Monday night, you just expected it. But for so much young talent, it's gotta help them develop a little quicker. He added that Triple H's nurturing style is likely to have a positive impact on WWE future stars. In mid-2022, Triple H took over WWE's creative direction after Vince McMahon stepped down amidst controversy. While McMahon occasionally influenced creative decisions, Triple H solidified his leadership after WWE's merger with UFC, bringing a new sense of structure. His hands-on, steady approach fostered a more organized backstage, a notable change from McMahon's fast-paced environment. As a result, talent development has flourished, 
and WWE's creative direction has grown under his leadership, shaping a new era for the company. With The Undertaker's endorsement of the changes in WWE's backstage atmosphere, it seems that Triple H's leadership is creating a more positive and supportive environment for the next generation of superstars. What are your thoughts on WWE's backstage environment under Triple H? Do you think the calmer approach is better for developing talent? Jade Cargill begs fans to move on from her AEW past. Jade Cargill, the current WWE Women's Tag Team Champion, is making waves in WWE, but it seems some fans and media outlets are still focusing on her past with AEW. During an interview with Hot 97, Cargill reflected on her early days in AEW, recalling how she was thrown into the spotlight without much guidance, even in high-profile matches involving stars like Cody Rhodes and Shaquille O'Neal. Despite crediting veterans like CM Punk, Brian Danielson and Cody Rhodes for helping her progress, it's clear that Jade is ready to move on from that chapter of her career. I didn't really have direction. I didn't know how a heel was supposed to act. I was just myself, Cargill recalled. In response to recent reports rehashing her early experiences, Cargill took to Twitter to express her frustration, calling for the conversation to shift toward her current WWE journey. This is old. You've all heard it before. Can we please turn the page? I'm focused on another goal. Thanks, guys. Next, Cargill tweeted, making it clear that she's eager to leave her AEW history behind and focus on her future in WWE. While Cargill's past helped shape her into the star she is today, her sights are firmly set on the road ahead, and she's ready to prove herself in WWE. As she continues to evolve, fans are curious to see what's next for the powerhouse superstar as she takes on new challenges in the ring. What do you think of Jade Cargill's response to questions about AEW? Do you agree that it's time to focus on her WWE future? Cody Rhodes' sister attacks Kevin Owens. Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns teamed up at WWE Bad Blood 2024 to take on the Bloodline. The duo defeated Solo Sikoa and Jacob Fatu with the help of a returning Jimmy Uso. The Atlanta event ended with The Rock's comeback, but that wasn't all. Kevin Owens backstabbed the American Nightmare and attacked him in the parking lot after the show went off the air. WWE officials were not happy with the prize fighter's behavior. KO was fined and suspended for assaulting Rhodes. On the latest episode of SmackDown, Owens entered the ring despite his suspension to address his part of the story. But before he could explain his actions, his mic was cut. He later grabbed Corey Graves' microphone set and claimed that he didn't turn his back on Rhodes. KO felt the American Nightmare was the one who backstabbed him. The prize fighter's claim enraged Rhodes, and the latter came down the ramp to settle the score. However, SmackDown general manager Nick Aldis and security blocked his way. Eagle-eyed fans noticed that Kevin Owens was wearing Cody Rhodes' father's t-shirt during the segment. On X, Dusty Rhodes' daughter and the American Nightmare's sister, Teal Rhodes, shared a picture of herself wearing the same shirt following the program. She seemed unhappy with KO and even labeled him a traitor. Not that old traitor KO wearing the same shirt as me yesterday, Teal Rhodes wrote. Later on in the show, Kevin Owens launched an attack on his now former tag team partner, Randy Orton. This assault on the Viper could once again land the prize fighter in trouble. Roman Reigns makes a surprise appearance to grant wishes. Roman Reigns wrestled his first match back during Bad Blood 2024, and it is evident he has a lot of things left to do as far as facing off against the new bloodline is concerned. Even then, Reigns makes sure to give time to his fans, and it appears he surprised a bunch of Make-A-Wish kids recently. The original tribal chief of WWE had ruled over the company with an iron fist, but he is currently one of the biggest baby faces in the company. Naturally, it's not just a character he portrays on television as Reigns is truly one of the nicest individuals in professional wrestling. As seen by footage making rounds online, the former undisputed WWE champion paid a surprise visit and ended up granting several wises for Make-A-Wish children in their class. Reigns was clearly happy to be there, and he even FaceTimed quite a few children who were simply ecstatic to see him. Reigns also signed shirts and took photos with all the kids, making it clear they will have memories to last a lifetime. Reigns even had a wholesome moment with a Make-A-Wish kid earlier this year as well, following the Royal Rumble. Reigns is currently more focused on teaming up with Jimmy Uso to face off against the new bloodline, as it's clear he isn't open to working with Jey Uso at the moment. Nonetheless, fans were happy to see Reigns fulfill so many wishes and that is all that matters. Is Roman Reigns one of the nicest WWE superstars of all time? How Roman Reigns can simply destroy the new bloodline. Roman Reigns has not confronted the fact that he and Jimmy Uso are outnumbered against Solo Sokoa's bloodline. This week on SmackDown, Reigns refused to get help from his former right-hand man, Jay Uso, after the latter left him high and dry last year. At least that's what is seen through his lens. Meanwhile, Solo Sokoa has built up a strong and dangerous version of the bloodline by standing on the foundation Roman Reigns laid four years ago. 
Former WWE analyst Matt Camp believes there is one thing that can hurt Sokoa's ego, and it is the OTC who needs to point it out. Speaking on Busted Open, the former WWE analyst and Denise Salcedo discussed the level of heat Solo Sokoa has been receiving. Matt highlighted the Atlanta crowd chanting, you can't wrestle to Solo at Bad Blood last Saturday, and explained this resulted from Jacob Fatu's quiet dominance as Sokoa's enforcer. If I'm Roman and Jimmy, I'm pointing that out. You guys weren't anything until you had this guy, Jacob Fatu, by you. He's the one. There's Roman's manipulation right there. That's old school Roman. As a babyface, he can plant those seeds. Even Paul Heyman, if Paul comes back. I know what you guys were, but you're a different animal because you have Jacob, Matt Camp said. Camp continued that this would provoke Solo Sokoa and instigate tension between between the new tribal chief and the Samoan werewolf, Jacob Fatu. While things will not be the same, with former members Jay Uso and Sami Zayn finding success as singles stars on Raw, it is up to Roman Reigns to seek help against Solo Sikoa and his clan. Matt Camp feels that WWE will probably not use this plot point in the narrative until Reigns gets on the same page as Jimmy Uso and possibly reunites with at least Jay Uso. Jacob Fatu is the X factor in the new bloodline, according to Matt, and this is something that will affect Solo Sikoa's psyche down the line. Let Roman and Coder plant those seeds, but they can't do that until they get on the same page, with Roman and Jimmy and maybe eventually Jay. They have to find that common ground. There has to be an acknowledgement from Roman. Once they all get on the same side, then they start prodding and poking of what Solo is and what Jacob is, he added. This week's Friday Night Smackdown ended with the new bloodline laying waste to Roman Reigns and Jimmy Uso, largely thanks to Jacob Fatu. The Rock finally breaks silence on ditching WrestleMania 41. The Rock has finally addressed the ongoing rumors of him missing WrestleMania 41. Paradise, Nevada will host the show of shows next year. Dwayne Johnson made a haunting WWE return at Bad Blood to seemingly put Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns on notice. The final boss stood on the ramp, counted to three on his fingers, and made a throat-slashing gesture toward the baby faces before walking off the stage. After the show went off the air, the Brahma Bull launched a verbal tirade at the bloodline. Rumors then suggested that WWE intends to do The Rock versus Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes in a triple threat match at the Showcase of the Immortals next year. Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter later learned that The Rock wouldn't compete at WrestleMania 41 due to his heavy schedule. It looks like the final boss has put those rumors to rest once and for all. Earlier today, the People's Champ was asked by a fan whether he would miss the show of shows in 2025. On Instagram, the 52-year-old legend responded to the fan by mentioning that viewers shouldn't believe any rumors about his role at Mania. Don't believe any of that bull, he wrote in the comments section of a post. In another Instagram post, Dwayne Johnson seemingly confirmed that he would return in 2025, which all but confirms his participation at WrestleMania 41 next year.